Hi everybody, if you're like me, you've been spending some time wondering how you can get a tollway named after you, and then how you can pick up a Nobel Prize along the way. So stick with me, I have about four minutes left to tell you about 120 years of service by a woman named Jane Addams, um, who got a Nobel Prize, the seventh woman to win one, the first American woman to win one, and now we have a tollway named after her. Jane Addams, if you'll follow my cursor here, this is Jane Addams older. This is Jane Addams winning her Nobel Peace Prize at 71. She was too sick to go pick it up in person, but she won for assiduous effort to revive the ideal of peace and to rekindle the spirit of peace in her nation and the whole of mankind. So the idea here is that Jane Addams reforms and her interest in helping people went beyond Chicago. Whole House was open for, as I said, 120 years. It closed in 2012, uh, cutting out 60 programs that were still surviving in terms of child, child welfare and job training. And those were some of the initial things that Adams and her friend Ellen Star Gates uh, were trying to do when they set up Whole House. Whole House is, um, is modeled after Toynbee Hall that uh, Adams saw when she went to London to kind of figure out her purpose. Toynbee Hall was male intellectuals helping the poor kind of uh, gain a little bit more stability in their lives. Adams comes back to Chicago um, aware of the urban problems and realizing that with the influx of immigrants, it's the 19th century, it's the Industrial Revolution, people are rebuilding after the fire, um, the Great Fire of Chicago. And uh, immigrants are living in, in conditions that are appalling. And Jane Addams says, how can we allow this to be? Um, but also she and her friend are extremely worried that the the these immigrants and the poor are being deprived of exposure to the arts. This was very important to them. They had a kitchen, they had a, an art center open in Whole House before they had a kitchen open because their goal was to, they, their belief was that you cannot raise good citizens without taking, in, in, uh, taking account of food, of art, of industry, of um, mental health, of physical health. Uh, so she is considered the founder of the social work movement. Um, Jane Addams was uh, prolific in her writing and prolific in her deeds. She um, worked on labor laws for children and adults. Um, at, at the peak, at the peak of its time, Hull House had 13 buildings, and here's the so you have some impressions here, or some images here of the 13 buildings, and again, a picture of Jane Addams up in the left corner. Uh, the buildings are shown from various angles, and I like the one at the bottom left with the crowd of it, because it's this idea that, of the immigrants coming together to build a unified community, not to be pitted against each other, but to be part of something larger than a divisive, uh, everybody scrabbling for their own their own living. Um, and to be part of an artistic community, to be, be part of a socioeconomic um, uh, grouping that came together to, to work together to move out of uh, bad conditions. Here, if you, this is a, a quick uh, article about Jane uh, Adams on, from The Guardian. And if you, I like this, if you go here, you can click on each of these rooms and it'll tell you a little bit more about um, what the room, the purpose of each room in, in Whole House was. Uh, Whole House had the first playground, the first gymnasium, the first bathhouses. And what's intriguing to me about the bathhouses is Jane Addams talks about her learning of Chicago legislative power, how power gets aggregated. Um, and so she had to talk with the aldermen and there was the, so many hoops she had to jump through and they were like, who's gonna use bathhouses? People have enough water to clean themselves, surely, and um, and on a regular basis, of course, uh, but they didn't. And so Adams opens up the first bathhouse, um, and within short order, five more were opened because they were needed. Uh, so, you know, this idea of cleanliness as well um, as feeding people and getting people uh, socio, it's getting people uh, jobs that fit their skills and uh, giving them educational opportunities they might not otherwise have had were part of what some of the whole house um, ideals. Uh, I did want to point out that Adams, uh, uh, instead of having a male uh, faculty there, she had female intellectuals there uh, at Whole House and they lived among the poor. They didn't live apart from them because they thought, why would we come and tell them what we think they need? Why don't we just learn from them firsthand what they do need? And then one of the best ways we can do that is by living among the people we wish to serve. 
And I'll end it here with these two quotes. I won't read them to you, but I like them because she uses once again the arts to talk about the importance of what she's doing. And she says, you can't have a democracy without arts. And the arts, rep, you know, she uses a choir to talk about how a choir works like, like a society and like a democracy. And again, she talks about building good workers. You cannot have decent good workers um, who, unless they are exposed to the arts because it, it gives them a whole different interpretation of what their contributions can be and also what what the world can be with their uh, with their ideas. It's a very um, high aspiring ideal. Adam's made a huge difference in the lives of a lot of people and five and a half minutes is not enough to tell you that or really to convince you. If you do want to know more about Jane Addams, here are just some of the many, many, many websites and, and books and things I found, articles I found about Jane Addams and Hull House and its significance. But I don't have any more time to share with you. So thank you very much for spending time with me listening to The Life of Jane Addams.